shelter from the cold. Never have to wonder if the glowing aura around the kindred spirit is real. Vulnerability erasing the hate. Stars lighting up the night sky. Sweetness to cancel out the sour. It moves gracefully and fluidly through the world and hugs me at the best of moments. Opens my eyes to the universe and there isn't a thing I would change. It brings eternal laughter and youth. Its blinding light outshines the bad things. Smiles in the face of sadness. Smile wide because it's your birthright. There's no spiritual tax to pay. Butterflies are plentiful here. The greatest investment you can make is love. Thoughts pulled into constellations, absence of pain and fear. We are no longer islands away. I hum to it long in me. That song is your voice. The music to my ears, sound of birds asking you to participate in their mourning. Bow tied perfectly on a neatly wrapped gift, closed eyes, one degree of separation from the surprise. Scent of vanilla, cinnamon, sugar melting into each other. All the broken pieces finally fitting together somehow. Sweet spring air whispering to me the promises of a good future, stretching higher to the sky to wave hello. Light breeze carrying the laughter, floating in midair, made real. Hammock wrapping me up in its secure embrace, sunshine stretching to cover the expanse of my skin. A feeling of great pleasure and happiness, joy. Peace is the steady, steady coexistence of intentional presence and random release. Shriveled peels as gemstones, 
paint my smile with Mississippi clay so it hardens into a smile that even New Orleans humidity can't crack. Stitch rosebuds to my oldest daughter's dress until the suffocating smell reminds her that her name, that she home hung, is a pocket of dirt from my childhood straight that she must carry, not the flimsy petals of a pink rose. At my wedding reenactment, fill the tables with useless red trinkets, solo cups and Pepsi cans, disposable chopstick wrappers, anything, until I can spit back, here is home. If I am supposed to be loved and lucky and happy, then I will bite my tongue for 21 years, letting my blood spill onto my youngest daughter, cradled in my arms until she is a garment in sunlight. Time means nothing, my daughters, when our chests rise and fall to cicada chirps on summer nights. But it's been 23 years, and y'all no longer live in a tiny brick house. When I think of home, there is no red. There is no supposed love, or luck, or happiness. Just see foam on sand grains. Kindness, swirls of cream on coffee at sunrise. The weather is perfect, just cold enough to heighten your senses since last night. You do not have to talk, but you want to. You say you have never felt like this before, but you want to keep feeling it, even after you go home. Goodness. Now, moral excellence or virtue, the best part of anything, the state or quality of being good. The last time I saw goodness, it was a beautiful gypsy woman with long black hair and an exceptional amount of gold jewelry whose feet beat, beat out in ancient rhythm on the weathered flagstones of an Andalusian street. Goodness looked like the flash of a gold tooth in the laugh of an old fisherman as he spoke of his grandchildren and the way that fifty years on a careless ocean had not dulled the twinkle in his eyes. It looked like the six-and-a-half-foot-tall bouncer who let me borrow his phone at two in the morning with a smile bigger than his biceps. Goodness is within each and every one of us, like the flame on a trick candle that just won't go out. Faith is the ringing sound of Sunday church bells. Sitting in mass, listening to a man dressed in some toga made to look holy and pure. The high ceilings painted with angels, somehow trying to bring us closer to God. While the priest preaches for more than two hours about a book some mortal wrote and claimed it God's words. The congregation gathers and listens to his preach as if believing in God implies that your faith isn't real unless you get it from a priest. Faith is a black mother bowing her head to pray at 2 a.m. that the hoodie her son got for his birthday doesn't seem too dark, too mysterious, too dangerous, too black. God forbid, God forbid the police officer patrolling the street thinks his hoodie is hiding too much because that would be enough to turn it into a one-way shootout. Enough reason for the cop to determine the time of her son's funeral. Enough for, to add a casket to her chopping list. But not enough to get justice for the armed robbery of her child's life. Faith is the ability to hold on to something we believe exists but, loves in, but can't see. There's a thin line between hope and faith. Sometimes we think of hope when we really are speaking of faith. We confuse the two because as abstract and hard to hold on to as they both are, hope is more concrete. Faith is, a, faith is attached to the default belief of a higher being or power, someone we can't seem to be able to hear, 
touch, see, or smell, but are meant to believe in. That's why we wish God was more human than godly. But if he acted in our image and likeness, could we still have faith? Mildness, lack of intensity, sensitivity, docility, warmth. In the summers, when we live grateful and weighed down with swimming pool softness, there are sometimes colored spots to the air, like candle wax desires. Every birthday prayer we made as children brought, singed into the present. Yellow, blue, pink, green, the gentle heat of them, staring, restless. You are my most modest dream, our mothers tell us at the breakfast table. You are the docile thing I once conceived of in my childhood. We are virgins, so we cannot, we can still go to bed with our faces washed, our feet clean to pinkness, our stomachs full of food prepared for us by our mothers. In return, all of the girls we cannot be blank at us from beyond curtain windows. They are weary, red-faced, half-made girls who tantrumed away their toddlerhood, grew up and spit in the mirror and named themselves women. At the breakfast table, we fold spoonfuls of oatmeal into our mouths, jealously fill ourselves full to bursting. Eventually we step back, still wanting, from the sunny yellow bowls, the silver spoons that were once a wedding present, let that be the reverse of possession. In the evenings, we sometimes gather at the edge of a public pool sheer blue, sudden absence of clarity. Here, we finally lose virginity, old blood, our baby sister. This is a kind of birthright, a way of declaring belonging or of saying goodbye. Freshly robotic, we calibrate ourselves to the warmth of the pool, pour chlorine over our twisted limbs. Tonight we will lie back in a thousand crystal twinned convent beds, mirrored and empty as Puritans or as little girls, which are the same thing, civil and willing and only ever waiting for something good. Self-control, the ability to control one's desires or the expression of them in one's behavior. The checking of one's true feelings in dealing with others. What separates us from our less civilized ancestors and other animals. The willpower to avoid vices and temptations. <clears throat> my body is my fortress. My mind is the highest tower. Nothing is allowed in or out unless I permit it. The air particles must don hazmat suits and gloves before they can enter my lungs, and they must pass through customs on the way out, sign contracts promising not to tell anyone what they have seen here. If you tell me that I cannot live my life this way, that eventually I will need something from someone. 
I will take this as an insult. I will not rise to it, however, because I am better than you. But I make a mental note to no longer say hi to your mother when I see her on the sidewalk. Then I will say no. I will not need anything from anyone ever. If I need happiness, I manufacture it. I send my face through a conveyor belt at two upturned mouth corners at anywhere from two to sixteen teeth, depending on circumstance. Soften my eyes and wham bam. <laughs> a smile that could fool anyone. But it doesn't, and here I can flower, I can pretend to be asleep, I can pretend I like you, I can pretend I don't like you. And you'll never know the difference. I eat not when I am hungry, but when it is eating time. I sleep not when I am tired, but when it is sleeping time. I wake up at the crack of dawn. I am a well-oiled machine, powered by a battery which charges on the sheer joy I feel in knowing that I live behind a moat and fire pits and a minefield from which nothing of myself can escape. You think that is unhealthy. I know you think that, because your mind is like glass to me, simple and transparent. So let me tell you how healthy I am. I live on a diet of almonds and broccoli and caffeine to maximize my intellectual potential to reduce the percentage of fat on my body. So far, I have reduced it by 12.1%. I read one scientific article per day for the enrichment of my mind, one novel per week. All the showers I take are cold to help my skin and my hair look better. I run seven miles every single morning. I sleep six hours every single night. I weigh myself two to three times per day. I eat two meals in between. I have one goal. But what about taking breaks, you say? I have tried that. I tried chilling every Friday afternoon from 3.30 to 9.30 p.m., but I found that during that time, the hours began to look like deserts, that I could neither fill nor cross. Time slid slowly by, and I began feeling alone. Restricted material has been compromised, so I stopped that. Bad idea in the first place, to think I need breaks loading, loading, I do not have friends. I consider friends to be a pointless distraction from the things that are really important. Friends only want to argue. I consider arguments to be fruitless, as I have known exactly what I want in life since I was born. I keep up with politics and current events, only to make myself smarter, better, Petty discourse is beneath me. Engaging in it would pollute. What was that? Things worth fighting for, you say. Causes, you say. Compromises and sacrifices, you say. Things worth fighting for, you say. Haven't you been listening? This whole fucking time, I'm a sacred pinnacle of neutrality. My mind and my actions are pure. There's nothing about me to criticize or find fault with because I keep all of my problems and opinions in a safe that only I have the key to. I'm in complete control 110% of the time, and if you don't believe me, well then you can suck my restrictive material has been compromised. Please wait. System reboot.
To answer your question, I do not get angry because I do not feel emotion, that is. I feel emotion, but I do not express it. Restricted material has been compromised. And so to the rest of the world, it appears as if I do not feel emotion. See previous definition of self-control. You say I need to calm down and relax, but I am busy, I am relaxed. I am late, I am relaxed. It is late, I am relaxed. Just chill, no. System processing, no. System processing, no. System processing, no. Access denied, access denied, access denied. Too many. System loading, loading, loading. System overloaded. Reboot necessary. Reboot has failed at this time. System shutting down. Thank you all for coming out. The free worship is officially ended.